What's going on, horror fanatics? So here's my review of Dylan's new nightmare. And let me say this and get this out the way. I'm not personally attacking anyone associated with this film, but I am giving some opinions that most won't agree on. Just wanted to throw that out there. And furthermore, out of the big three, Never Hike Alone, It's Me, Billy, and Dylan's new nightmare, I actually prefer Dylan's new nightmare over Never Hike Alone and It's Me, Billy. Not saying that it's leagues above the other two, but for whatever reason, I prefer to watch Dylan's new nightmare over them. So, anyway, Cecil Laird of the Horror Show YouTube channel created this fan film sequel to 1994's Wes Craven's New Nightmare. And let me preference by saying that I'm not the biggest Nightmare on Elm Street fan, but I will say that Wes Craven's New Nightmare is probably the second best movie in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. The original and New Nightmare are truthfully the only ones I can actually sit down and take them seriously. All of the other movies in that franchise, I can barely watch it. I can barely get through it. <laughs> but anyway, Cecil Lair brought back Miko Hughes to reprise his role as Dylan. Now, Cecil was able to convince Dave McCray also to be Freddy Krueger. And Vince DeSanti is also affiliated with this film. So with some good underground horror minds coming together to make this short film. So basically, Dylan's new nightmare was about Dylan trying to cope and move on from the traumatic past. And apparently, Freddy Krueger has come back to cause more havoc and torture upon Dylan's life. Not only Dylan, but also Heather Langenkamp. Okay, so my overall consensus of this fan film is that it was okay, and I feel like it just lacked a real story, and as I understand, this is just part one, but honestly, this wasn't even an appetizer, not even a snack, more like a sip of water, like, I was waiting for that one wow moment, and I never got it, and certain scenes should have just been completely cut out. The therapist and Dylan talking just ate up too much time. It was a whole bunch of empty dialogue. And I understand that they're trying to catch the audience up of what's been going on since 1994. But, you know, a lot of that could have just been left out. And, you know, maybe Dylan could have just been venting to a friend or maybe his significant other about all of this. And the therapist just could have been cut out. And I just felt like the therapist was put there as filler. And if I'm not mistaken, the whole therapy scene was around six minutes. Like, you know how much you could have done in six minutes with this movie? I will say, though, that the production was great, but some scenes look like an actual Hollywood movie. But then you had scenes like Dylan driving, and it, it kind of looked kind of weird with him driving or whatever as far as, like, the camera angles and stuff like that. And another scene that just made me cringe was, you know, the therapist's arm getting chopped completely off. <laughs> that looked like a backyard fan film with that whole scene. Like, you know, I just felt like that was a little bit over the top and they should have just maybe used a different angle and it would have looked better. But seeing her arm completely fly off and hit the ground, it was kind of, yeah, that, that didn't look too good. But I will say that the opening audition scene was the strongest part of this fan film. And for the most part, it was better than I expected. But um, one thing that also just popped in my mind was the 7-8. It's already too late. <laughs> that line was so cringy because it's like you're trying to fit so many words into that one sentence or trying to make it rhyme or whatever. I feel like they should have shortened that up because that definitely didn't you know, fit you know freddy as far as like him speaking or whatever so they could have switched that dialogue around a little bit but overall i didn't have too much of a problem with the dialogue because it's a fan film i don't expect it to be this glorious hollywood movie you get what i'm saying and as far as Freddy Krueger, I feel like Dave McCray did pretty good. I mean, he nailed the voice and the gestures, but the only downside, which is a big downside, is he looked too small, a little too short, and his shoulders weren't broad enough. I just feel like, you know, I don't know, maybe they could have added a little bit more padding or, you know, stuffed up the shirt a little bit or the sweater a little bit but i, I don't know he just seemed kind of small like a regular person could take freddie that's just my opinion and a side note have y'all noticed that dave mccray quickly separates himself from any questions about the script <laughs> i personally think that he wasn't a fan of you know the script or maybe even the fan film but i, I just feel like he used it as an opportunity to be freddie but like i said you know 
he comes across as short and small in this fan film. And, you know, that's probably going to be the only reason why Hollywood don't, doesn't reach out to Dave McCray as far as, like, to play Freddy Krueger. But um, who knows, man? I mean, they can do a lot of things with camera angles, and maybe they could have fixed the way he looked on camera. That's my only complaint about Freddy Krueger in this movie. Now, Miko Hughes did a decent job, but I think he needed that extra oomph to add to the lines and stuff like that. I think he needed a little bit more energy, and he showed emotion, but I just think, you know, he could have took it to another level, which his characters could have been written like that, but, you know, as far as, like, people saying that he did an excellent job and, you know, all that, I mean, it was okay, but it wasn't nothing, you know, spectacular or whatever. But here's my main thing about Dylan's new nightmare. A 20-minute fan film on a 40K budget, which is impressive because, you know, the, the fan film looked good. But here's the kicker. Now, Cecil claims to have almost two hours of behind-the-scenes footage. And I'm like, why? Why waste that time and effort on behind-the-scenes footage when that could have went towards the fan film in some capacity? We could have got more than a 20-minute fan film. And it's almost like, you know, he gets more excited talking about the -the behind-the-scenes stuff than the actual film itself. And, you know, overall, like I said, it was okay. But I think they made a huge mistake by leaving it on a cliffhanger. And here's the problem. Hypothetically, this could be a one and done fan film. And then what? You get what I'm saying? Like, what if you don't raise the money for the other films or the other feature film that you want to make? And the movie is left on a cliffhanger and we don't even get to see Heather Langenkamp or nothing like that. Like, why would you risk doing that on a cliffhanger? Like, like I said, for one, you know, Heather Lang account might not show up. And two, you know, y'all might not be able to raise the funds. And it seems like, you know, it was kind of a struggle to raise, you know, the funds for this. And this was just a 20 minute film. And listen, you know, the people who make these fan films, you know, they're brave because I believe in the future it's going to come a point in time where these studios are going to shut down these fan films like they could literally take everything off YouTube if they wanted to but yeah um those were my overall thoughts about Dylan's new nightmare what do you all think about this fan film do you like it do you dislike it do you like the ending um was it too short or was it just right you know um so let me know down in the comment section below and if you love any and everything horror movie related anything paranormal related then make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can see every time i upload as always be safe peace